Okay. Hello everyone. My name is Ji Hao Li from Tsinghua University. Today I'm going to share our team's latest work on the low Earth orbit satellite networks named Landsat-God, concealing endless and diversity pack losses in LAO satellite networks for delay sensitive web applications. Okay, this is the outline of my presentation today. Firstly, I will give you a very, very, very quick primer of LAO satellite networks because Nintendo have given us a wonderful background introduction. And then, uh, secondly, I will share our observation results about the web, web performance in emerging in emerging LAOS satellite networks. And, final, and second, uh, I will introduce the uh, ideas and the challenges while designing SetGuard. And finally, I will introduce the evaluation results about SetGuard. Okay, firstly, uh, the orbital, op orbital altitude of the typical LAO satellite uh, is within the 2,000 kilometers. And uh, uh, so it, it will move faster around Earth uh, at a very high speed. And as the uh, cost of launching satellites uh, is decreasing, so many companies have provide have have, pro, pro, have deployed many satellites in space to and uh, which of them can connect to each other in with the inter-satellite links. And this is the space segment of uh, LSN. And as for the ground segment, uh, the typical devices is the uh, satellite terminal and the ground stations, which can connect to the uh, satellites via uh, user satellite link and the ground satellite link. And as for the end-to-end -end communication, the user terminal will uh, send the data to the satellite terminal and to the satellites to ground station and uh, through, the inter uh, through the terrestrial internet, finally to the web server. So uh, let's ask a, such a question. How does typical delay-sensitive web applications perform in an LSN? So to, uh, answer this to answer this question, we measured and uh, compared the web, web RTC sessions performance in LSN and in uh, terrestrial net internet. So firstly, our partner have pro uh, deployed uh, one terminal in New York City and which can uh, in connect to the internet via Optimum and Starlink. And we also deployed three terminals. We also deployed three, three terminals in Davis, uh, Paris and Beijing, and then we set up uh, web RTC sessions between them. And uh, in this uh, ex experiment, we mostly uh, focus on the user perceived communication delay and uh, frames per second. And this is our observation result. Firstly, we observed, we observed that the LSN user uh, suffer from high end to end communication delay in all web RTC sessions. And second, we also find that the, although the LSN users can achieve a higher average of FPS, but they still suffer from unstable FPS. Like this. So uh, next, we analyze the root cause of the above problems uh, uh, through further measurement. Firstly, uh, we found that the LSN users suffer from low average but high burst packet loss, packet loss rate. Specifically, uh, the average packet loss rate is only 0.8%, but the, we can find that the bursty packet loss rate may range from, uh, well, 3% to 15%. And the second, we found that the LSN provides low average one-way delay, but bring high, high tail. Specifically, the minimum uh, one-way delay is less than 125 uh, millisecond, but we can find that the, mix the maximum one-way delay can exceed 750 milliseconds. And surprisingly, if we align their times, we can find that the high delays, high delay bursts are always accompanied by uh, high packet loss bursts. This is because uh, existing reliability control typically uses sender-based retransmission, and which is ineffective and uh, can bring high delay tail. And next, from the application level view, we further look at the size of the jitter buffer. As we all know, in order to achieve smooth uh, video or audio playout uh, in, a web, in a web RTC session, data frame will pass through the jitter buffer before they being paid out. So, and uh, we can, and uh, this buffer size is also is often related to the jitter delay, delay jitter uh, received perceived by the receiver. So uh, we can we can observe the 
a result of the jitter buffer delay and can find that the jitter buffer delay is larger in the, in the LSN compared with in the terrestrial network. So let's summary. Uh, firstly, sender sender based retransmission may lead to the high delay tail, and the high delay tail increase the jitter buffer size in the receiver size. And finally, the large jitter buffer size lead to higher user perceived communication delay. So uh, we try to solve this problem from the root cause and ask such a question: Can we improve loss recovery efficiency to reduce delay jitter? So our solution is set God. It is a novel in orbit loss recovery mechanism. Uh, firstly, I will introduce our basic idea behind the SIGARD is uh, lo local transmission. Look at the picture for data packets uh, coming to the uh, upstream node and they will be packed and in order in the control plane of the upstream, uh, upstream node. After that, a copy of them will be cached in the buffer and the original packs will be sent, uh, still, still be sent. And assume that in the transmission uh, process, the, the third packet is lost. Then the, then the download downstream node only receive packet one, two, four. And according to this, it sends a feedback to the upstream node. And uh, after that, if, uh, if the feedback information match the buffer header, buffer header packet, the, the packet will be removed from the buffer. And once the feedback, may, may feedback information mismatch, mismatch the buffer header packet, uh, loss may be detected and then the upstream node will retransmit the, this packet from the buffer locally. And at the same time, the, the feedback information can continue to match the buffer header packet. And uh, after, the, uh, after the, loss the loss recovery is uh, complete, the buffer is clear. So uh, from this figure, we can, we, we can see that the transmission is complete and uh, the local retransmission seems to work. But unfortunately, we still find this basic idea facing many, many challenges in LSN. The first challenge is buffer validation due to the aerial dynamics. Normally, the upstream satellite node uh, is within the view of the downstream ground station node. So in this, in this uh, uh, scenario, the local, local retransmission packets can be transmitted successfully, but as the satellites move on, it is out of view of the ground station, so the, the link between them is broken down. In this such in this scenario, the packet, the lost packet, the lost the local retransmission packets may lost again. So in, a, in other words, buffered packets cannot be successfully retransmitted through the original link after handover. This is the first. Uh, this is the first challenge. And the second challenge is inaccurate loss detection in one-to-many many links. Firstly, we look at the one-to-one one link. Uh, in a one-to-one one link, uh, send packets with order one, two, three may lead to a feedback packets with order one, two, three. That's right. One to one. So we, we can we can know that one-to-one one link we can get in order packets can lead to in order feedback. So out of order feedback may uh, can be regarded as the packet loss may happen. But however, in a one to many links, uh, send packets with order one, two may lead to the feedback information with two and one. So in this, in this scenario, expected order is disrupted by, by different delays. So in one to many links, the in order packets may not lead to in order feedback. So out of, so out of feedback cannot be regarded as the packet loss. So how to detect loss in such one to many links is another challenge. And the third challenge is compatibility problem. Uh, look at the picture. We assume the package one is lost when, when transmission and the package two is transmitted successfully. And then the package one is retran locally transmitted in the buffer, but the receiver still uh, re receive the package with order two and one. So we can find the out of order uh, package is caused by local transmission. So it so these uh, these events may mislead the up layer pro pro protocol behaviors. So this is the uh, compatibility problem. So how does the uh, setguard to solve the above challenges at this, at the same time? Firstly, setguard use a uh, handover aware buffer migration to uh, couple with the buffer invalidation problem. And the second, uh, setguard. Uh, can achieve efficient loss detection in uh, one too many links via timer adaption. And the, the third, uh, third one, uh, set guard will uh, preserve the network, uh, preserve the packet order in the net, network. So 
Next, I will introduce the uh, key ideas behind the uh, uh, guard in details. Okay, first, looking back at the first challenge, the key problem is buffered, pa buffered, pa buffered pa pa packet cannot be successfully retransmitted through original link after handover. So, uh, the key ideas of uh, the key idea of uh, set guard is retransmission packets through new paths uh, after handover. But this idea uh, still face uh, still face a new challenge is how does the outgoing upstream find the incoming node? This is a question. So uh, the idea of set guard is to use the preloaded ground ground satellite connectivity inf information in provided by the L LSN operator. The LSN operator may uh, deliver the connect connectivity information in advance to the satellites, and according to this information, the outgoing upstream node can know the incoming upstream node and the delivery the catch in the, the buffer packets in the buffer to the incoming upstream uh, incoming upstream node. And the second, uh, for the efficient loss detection via time adaptation. Uh, SetGuard used the dynamic timeout to detect loss in one to many links. And as for the in network order preserving, uh, SetGuard uh, set a reordering buffer in the ground. So uh, anyone can find more details in our paper about these uh, technologies. And then about the experimental setup, uh, we firstly, we finally. Uh, we use the starting constellation as the LSN in our evaluation and assume users distri distributed as New York City, London, uh, Sydney, and Singapore, uh, and, and uh, Sao Paulo. And uh, we compare uh, set TCP, uh, we compare set guard with set, set TCP, a link layer mechanism deployed in, in uh, endpoints, and a timber, a lost local recovery mechanism leverage stream code to guide a receiver to recover lost, lost packets, and the MPM, uh, IPEP uh, based mechanism in a dynamic network, and a link guard, a link layer, link local retransmission mechanism. We first evaluated SetGuard's performance at the network layer, as can, see, can be seen in the figure. SetGuard can significantly, significantly reduce the tail delay because SetGuard can retransmission lost uh, packets locally and uh, even in a dynamic scenario. And next, we find SetGuard, Setguard can uh, keep a high end-to-end -end throughput because uh, the sender perceives lower per packet loss rate. And for application level, uh, performance set guard can achieve uh, reduce user perceived communication delay in all web RTC sessions and it can keep a stable FPS. And uh, for the cost, we can find that set guard only occurs a 3.1% reduction in maximum transfer performance. That's all. This is our, our conclusion. We conduct a real-world measurement study and a proposed state guard, and the evaluation can show that uh, uh, state guard can improve the state guard web RTC sessions session performance. Okay, thank you. Any question is welcome.